This is a Logic Pro X tutorial covering everything from software instruments to recording MIDI. And they're all available sounds and we're using all software instruments that are available for free in Logic Pro X. This is a snippet of content from a more extensive Logic Pro X tutorial that I've made and it covers everything from getting started to actually building a full song arrangement. So if you're interested in that, click the link in the description. It is a free tutorial and it is available on YouTube. In this video, we're just going to be going over software instruments and recording MIDI. For your convenience and while you're watching this video, if you want to follow along to the same Logic Pro X session that I'll be working on, I've posted it as a free download in the link in the description as well. What we're going to want to do first is add a new track. And to do that, we can go right to the top and add a new track. We see new software instrument track. I also want to point out right here, we have a little shortcut. Um, it's called Option Command S, and that's actually how we can add a new software instrument track as well. And I just point this out because this is how I learned all my shortcuts, as they, they point them out everywhere. I recommend looking into the shortcuts, especially if you're doing tasks over and over again, it will save you time. So let's just do that now. Option Command S to add a new software instrument track, and you can see we've added a track here. So in our inspector window, we have open here. Click open, great. We have Alchemy as our main software instrument that we've added. This is just the default software instrument that Logic Pro X gives you. And you do have the option to change this. So let's look at changing this if we want a different instrument. Right now, Alchemy is a synth. So whatever we're gonna play on our MIDI keyboard, we're gonna get synth sounds. So let's look at adding a different instrument. When we hover over Alchemy, you can see these little two arrows. We're going to want to click that, and we can see all the different software instruments that Logic Pro has as stock plugins that we can get. So we have Alchemy, Drum Kit Designer, Synth, all these synths, ES1, ES2 synths, and Evoc, all these, a lot, a lot of options. I'm going to do the standard Alchemy as we have, because it is a standard and a, a decent stock plugin to use. And so I'm going to have that stereo. And we'll, we'll use Alchemy as a standard synth. So inside each software instrument, you have hundreds of different sounds available. For example, if we click in the middle of Alchemy, we're gonna pull up a window of all the sounds available to us under the Alchemy synth. And so we can, we can filter here by category and subcategory. And then we have all the synth sounds on the right here. If I scroll down, you can see there are hundreds. And so there's just way too many to go through right now. So I'm gonna do a simple filter. I'm gonna go keys, piano, and pop. So right now I filtered, there's much less, there's 28 here that I can, that I can um, filter by. So 80s digital piano is good enough. And I have my mini keyboard plugged in here and I'm gonna, I can test out what that sounds like. So, kind of cool. And if you have your MIDI keyboard plugged in, it should also be working just like mine is working now. If you don't have it, plug it in by USB and Logic Pro X will recognize that it's a MIDI keyboard and you should be able to get up and running without a problem. So let's say we do want to record with 80s Digital Piano. Then all we have to do is close this down. You can see that it's referenced 80s Digital Piano here. I can arm my track. I can put the cursor wherever I'd like to start recording. I have the other tracks muted now. I can keep those muted. And let's just start recording some notes just to see them come through. Just a simple example, and I can zoom in here by pinching my trackpad. And I can also go up to the top right and I can make these tracks fatter if I want them to be, just so I can get a better image of what I just recorded. So I wanna pull up the smart controls here. I'm gonna click on our 80s digital piano and you can see that this has come up. This is the same thing of pressing the scissors in the top left here. So I can press the scissors or I can just double click on the track. I'm gonna to pull this up so we can see it a little better and zoom in here. So this is what I've just recorded. And how I just wanna hear it back separately, I always have the option to press S and what S does is it solos the track and it will only play out of all my tracks, just the one that have the S's on. So I'm gonna solo this track and see what it sounds like. So cool, I mean, 
terrible composition, but you see what I mean. And so I have the option here to do whatever I want with these MIDI notes. I can click a MIDI note and drag it anywhere I want. I can extend the MIDI note. I can delete the MIDI note. I can bring it back if I want. So you, get, you see what I mean? MIDI gives you the flexibility of basically drawing musical notes. So if you made a mistake, you can, if, if you had actually played the note here, you just move it back instead of actually having to play the whole composition again. So the biggest powerful tool with MIDI is quantization. And so if I didn't play this in time, which you can see I haven't because this note, for example here, does not fall on the grid. And that would be locked in time if everything's on the grid. And that's the great thing about MIDI is you can lock in everything after the fact. You don't have to play everything in time. Just remember when we were doing our browsers, if I go back up here, and we were dragging things in from our browser window, from our loop browser, everything was locked in at our tempo of 90. And so now we want to lock in our MIDI notes as well. So let's write a better composition for our track and then lock it in with quantization. So now we want to record a better composed track with our loops that we have so it sounds a lot better. Um, we're going to mute our digital 80s digital piano and let's just have a listen to what our track sounds like right now. Kind of groovy, right? Uh, it's still basic, uh, very much in the early stages of the creativity of our song, but it's worth um, pursuing a little bit to see how far we can get with this. And I think that goes with a lot of music producers and musicians is don't quit at the beginning. Obviously, nothing is going to sound great at the first step. So let's continue with this. Uh, we're going to want to find something better inside our 80s digital piano. And I'll show you after, once we get the MIDI recording down, then we'll have the option to find any sound we want using the same MIDI recording. So it doesn't really matter if we if we don't like the 80s digital piano sound, once we have that MIDI recording of the right composition we like, then we can change it to no any sound we actually want in the world, really. So let's quickly record a better MIDI recording using our 80s digital piano. So I wanna get rid of this one by highlighting it, deleting it. We'll unmute the track, and we're going to play along with the recording. And it doesn't matter that the sound is coming out of my studio monitors because MIDI is only collecting the digital signal from the MIDI keyboard. So you can see here our key is in E minor, so I'll be playing in the key of E minor on the keyboard. Let's count in at the top here, one, two, three, four. We're gonna to wanna to count in so I'm not rushed as soon as I press record that I have to start playing. So I wanna do a count in of one bar. I do have the options if I find that I might need some more time to do up to six bars. Um, but you really rarely will ever need that much time. So let's record a one bar count in playing our 80s digital piano. That's kind of cool. I'm going to work with that right now. Let's have a let's put our cursor back and have a listen back. All right. So as I was saying before, let's um, double click this track and bring up the editor here. Zoom out just so we can see what we're working with. And let's start cleaning things up, taking things out, moving things back and forth depending on how we like it. But the most important thing we can do now is quantize and make sure everything is locked into place with our drums and our bass and our breathless piano here. So what we're gonna to wanna to do to quantize is by doing Command A, or we can do double click Select All, which is also Command A here. And then we can go over to Time Quantize here. We can go quantize by 1 16th note. And you can see how everything just moved over slightly. Well, that's exactly where we want it in place. So you can see that I was off time. 
And now if I zoom in, you can see, just let me go to the beginning here, everything is on the grid perfectly. So everything comes in on beat two. Those notes, that C note comes in perfectly. Sorry, that E minor note comes in perfectly. And then the C note comes in on beat three. We have a little bit of a note of a triad here, which is nice. And they're all landing on the grids perfectly in time. And then we have back to the E minor. We have the option here, if we want to remove this and only have the beginning, we can also loop it if we want to continue looping. And you'll see that the MIDI has gone forward and I can go up here and continue to loop my bass, continue to loop my drums, and so on and so forth. Um, but I, right now, I'm going to just keep it all in the standard little section here. What I like to do sometimes uh, if I am running low on creativity and I just need to play it over and over again to find some new ideas, you can use the cycle option, which is um, clicking this bar at the top. We'll put everything in yellow, and that's just gonna loop everything when it comes to the end here. It will start right at the beginning. So now that we have our 80s digital piano quantize, we're basically ready to start experimenting with other sounds. We can start recording more MIDI. Um, we, we have a lot of options. What I wanna mention now is how to use MIDI in Logic Pro X to use for other sounds. What I mentioned earlier is we don't actually have to use this 80s digital piano sound. Um, and over here, we can go back to Alchemy and we can open up Alchemy by pressing in the middle again. And we can already choose 80s pop electric piano. We can even go as far as not even choosing keys anymore and going back to the category all and going to bass. Um, strings, let's try strings for example. Let's go strings pop as, as a category and let's do um, this ocean flow. And we can click out and we can see what that sounds like even if we want to solo this to see what ocean flow sounds like. Loop the top, see what that sounds like. Kind of cool, gives it a cool vibe. Now let's take solo off and listen to the whole track. So it's, it's you know, it's not great, but we're, we're starting to get creative. And so if we don't like that, let's go back to Alchemy and choose something different. We could spend hours going through every little sound here and figuring out what we want that to sound like, going back to the guitars, anything we want. We can go as so far as choosing a completely different synth instrument. If we want something more acoustic, something more natural, we can use the EXS24 sampler and we can go to stereo. And this will bring up a sampler that has acoustic pianos. If we just click this top part here, this little green, three green dots, we can go down to all these instruments that this sampler has. Uh, one, one I really like is the Yamaha Grand Piano. So we choose Yamaha Grand Piano. Let's just X that out. And now we have a Yamaha Grand Piano. Well, that's what it sounds like. Let's solo this. Easy as that, we didn't have to record anything else and we just have our MIDI in place so we can try out tons of different sounds. Let's say we really like this Yamaha piano sound, right? Then we wanna leave that in there. Cool, so let's just make some space by clicking up the scissors at the top. Let's make our tracks a little bit less fat. Tick up the loop browser. And so let's say we wanna leave this Yamaha actually a little bit more fat just so I can see some things. Let's say we want this Yamaha track in place. Well, let's just add another software instrument track by going track software instrument, or we can go option command S. Another option to quickly add a track, if we want the same track, so we want this Yamaha grand piano again, we can do command D, and that will give us another Yamaha grand piano. So now we have another Yamaha grand piano and we have another alchemy track, but we want the same MIDI all we have to do is click this MIDI, Command C, or Edit Copy, and then click to where you want to paste it and what track. Let's say we want this down to another Alchemy track. Go down to another Alchemy track, paste it to where we want the cursor to be. So let's say we want it on the same spot at beat two, Command V, and we will have that MIDI going there as well. So we can solo this track and start shopping around for new sounds. I wanna use a completely different synth. Um, you know, 
I want to use, I want to even design my own sound. And this is something possible as well. And this is the very popular thing with Logic Pro X is it has decent stock synths that you can use. So let's go back to the EX S24 sampler. And right here, we can start using a synth and the oscillators on a synth to start making our own sounds. So let's just see what this sounds like right now if we solo it. Let's loop at the top. Let's just lower the volume. So it doesn't sound good at all, right? No. That's the beauty of creativity. Get in there and start changing dials. I mean, to, to properly make a good synth sound takes a lot of work. So that's why there are stock plugins. So if you don't like that, let's open the, the ESX24 again. Click on the three green dots. We, we tried good acoustic pianos out. We can go bass, go drums, keyboards, orchestra. Wow. You know what? Let's do orchestra. Let's go strings. Let's do a string ensemble. Let's see what that sounds like. That sounds quite nice. And I think that could sound quite nice with this 80s digital piano even. Cool, instead of having the string ensemble doing the exact same thing as the Yamaha Grand Piano. What I might do is open this up by pressing the scissor window or double clicking on the track. And I might just clean this up a little bit. I might take away these three notes just so it's not exactly the same. And I might extend these notes just so it's a nice underlying tone across the track. So I'll do that with the same other little notes here and delete these. And I'm gonna bring this track, these notes, I'm going to extend them over just so they elongate a little bit and fill up a nice, and fill up the sound nicely. So I'll show you what I mean in a second. Let's just delete these little notes. So let's just solo this for a second. String ensemble. Okay, so let's see what the string ensemble sounds like with the rest of our track without the digital's piano. So let's take this S off here. We can also take it off at the top here with this S. Let's mute our 80s digital piano and see what this sounds like. So it definitely gives it a different vibe, a bit contrasty with the strings and the bass. Um, so we'll have to spend a bit more time coming up with the right composition and instrumental. But this is the part where creativity comes into play and um, where you can really put the Logic Pro X tools to power with your creativity. So take some time and go through all the instruments and use your MIDI keyboard or paint the notes in with MIDI as you please. From a beginner's perspective, that is everything I think you need to know or to get started getting your feet wet with recording MIDI and using software instruments inside Logic. I think the best way to take your knowledge even further now is just getting your MIDI keyboard set up with different software instruments and start making some music and playing around. Basically making a lot of mistakes and figuring things out as you go on. It's really how I've learned and how most other producers learn as well. I'm a singer songwriter myself and I've posted all my demos and music online. If you're curious to hear what I sound like, I'll leave a couple links to my music in the description as well. And if you want more content on music, personal growth or entrepreneurship, please feel free to subscribe and I hope to see you in the next video.